was an interesting change. It actually finishes the startup sound, or startup sound, finishes the shutdown sound before it actually exits the GNOME desktop environment. And it is, uh, is it shutting down? I'm not sure. My mouse is frozen. So I'm not sure what it's doing. Uh, let me check. Oh, no, it just shut down. Okay. <laughs> So before I actually get started with the pre-recorded footage of Ubuntu 6.10, I just forgot to do this for some reason. I figured I'd show off the old Wayback Machine Archive website of Ubuntu 6.10, just because there's so little inside of this video to show off, so I figured since that's not really going to make that much of a video, I might as well take a look at the website for sure. There are some subtle differences, mainly on the homepage here, as you can see there's Ubuntu 6.10 with a different picture of people together and released October 26th, 2006. Now I was trying to get a website uh, snapshot from that date, but unfortunately I don't think it was either the 25th or the 26th. Let me see what it was. Yeah, it was the 25th. So clearly that didn't work out in my favor. So I had to load the one from the 1st of November, but that's fine. So that'll work in my favor. So essentially the text is the same. The only major difference on their website is they support Ultra Spark and T1 machines from Sun, in addition to IBM's own Open Power or Power 5 architectures on Power PC, and uh, the website otherwise kind of sort of feels a little different. As you can see, there's some other news articles down here, which is pretty interesting. Wins PC World Award, Opera 9 on Ubuntu. I actually want to see this real quick if this will actually load. I doubt it, but it's worth checking out just to see because it'd be really interesting. I might actually have to look that up and see if there's actually an old Ubuntu version of Opera 9 to download. After the launch of Ubuntu 6.06 .06 LTS, Canonical is pleased to announce the availability of Opera 9 for Ubuntu. Yeah, that'd be the web browser, of course, yada yada yada. By using the add slash remove programs feature. Huh, interesting. So I almost wonder if you were to run this, update the software sources, and then download the Opera web browser. Um, if that would actually work. Hmm. I'll have to try that in a future video and see if that's actually the case. Maybe in 7.04 I might actually see if that works. But I'm not going to bother with it in this video. I was just curious to see if that would actually load. And it seems like it is. And apparently Ubuntu Linux was voted the most popular desktop. Which is interesting because Microsoft Windows certainly was. Maybe in other countries. But eh. Anyway. So let's go ahead and get into the pre-recorded footage. Good day folks, Jordan here, and welcome to another software overview video. In today's video, we're exploring Ubuntu 6.10 Edgy Eft from the 26th of October 2006, or October 2006 in general if you want to be less specific about the actual release date. Ubuntu 6.10 was less of a feature update and more of just a maintenance update, if you will. It does bring in some new touches to the user interface, including a new startup sound, which we will get to hear when we start it up. And it also includes a few applications which are new. For example, there's a new note-taking app called Tomboy, which I hope to find in the uh, Applications menu. We'll find out when we get in there. There's also a system for automated crash reports and reporting them called Apport. As far as I know, I think that's what that was called. There's also a new photo manager known as FSpot and not... Uh, yeah, put it that way. And there's also a meta package or something or another to that effect called Easy Ubuntu, which is a third-party app allowing Ubuntu to become a lot easier to use to the average consumer, who may or may not actually be coming from, say, Windows, for example. And there's also a modified human theme, which was, you know, taken, or it was started in Ubuntu 6.06. .06. It was a lighter colored theme, more orange instead of brown. So I guess in this version of the operating system, they made it a little bit brighter, a little bit more human, I guess. So, anyway, those are the big major changes to the operating system. Now I already have a virtual machine set up ready to roll, so let's jump right in. Now at this stage there's virtually no difference except for the boot screen which is kind of broken on VMware so we can't really see it, but the back and forth progress bar would normally be there, um, but it's kind of broken as you can see. It's supposed to go back and forth and back and forth, but it's obviously not working and it's an obviously black and white which is not helpful at all. So yeah. Yeah, 
and there was the new startup sound if you were able to hear it. Now I believe that startup sound lasted from Ubuntu 6.10 all the way up until Ubuntu 10.04 long term support. I'm not too sure about that, but all I know is that the classic startup sound, which if I actually minimize this real quick and we'll bring in Ubuntu 6.06 long term support, which I know definitely had the older style of startup sound to it. You know, everything or everything from Ubuntu 4.10 beta up until 6.06 long term support used this particular startup sound. I don't know, in my personal preference, I think I like the old one better because this one in particular, it's not a bad startup sound and it, it, it's a pretty good, it's pretty calm, but you know, this one's more, a little more invigorating, but I like the older one better. But I guess in all fairness, it does tie in with the Ubuntu theme. so. I can't really blame the developers all that much for wanting to do a different startup sound. It actually sounds a lot more exciting and really awesome like you're installing Ubuntu or starting up Ubuntu, you know? It's something different rather than just the traditional old Microsoft Windows or something, for example. So there are a couple of changes already here on the desktop. For one thing, the desktop background by default is much brighter and much lighter, a lot more friendly looking. I guess that kind of ties in with the default human theme and also, the Firefox icon is a little different, and some of the icons don't have drop shadows, but otherwise, the theme itself is virtually unchanged, and so are the font. So, since the installation process is identical to that of 6.06 .06 long-term support, I'm going to go ahead and cut the screen recording, and I will come back once we start this up for the first time. One thing I did forget to mention also is there's a difference between the design of the lock screen or the login screen. As you can see on 6.10, it's got a more orange tint to it. The logo's got a glow effect applied and reflection. Whereas on 6.06, .06, it's more flat and plain and yellow. So they look identical uh, functionally, but cosmetically there's a huge difference. So just figured I'd point that out before we continue. All right, so here we are at the desktop. Now, of course, we have to obligatorily check out Firefox real quick to see what version it is. It says, welcome to, oh God, security error. <laughs> welcome to Ubuntu 6.10, edgy eft. And this is version 2.0, not too shabby. So there is the text editor that we're gonna take a look at here, which is under accessories and it's under text editor. So there's gedit, it is tabbed. So you can make multiple tabs and have multiple text documents in the same window, which is something Notepad didn't have, like ever. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty nice to see. There's also a disk usage analyzer. And as you can see on a de facto installation, it uses about 1.9 gigabytes of disk space. So about 10% of a 20 gig hard drive, which would have been fairly small for 2006 standards, especially late 2006. But for older systems in particular, you know, that was crucial. I believe FSpot Photo Manager is there and uh, import source. I don't have anything to import, but we can still take a look at the application itself. The interface is pretty basic, at least at this stage. I imagine though, if you were to put in a photo to edit it, it would have a lot better of an interface and you'd have some extra controls down here at the bottom. What version is this? FSpot version 0.2.1 by Novell Incorporation or Incorporated which interestingly has the Genome or Gnome logo on it. Interesting. wonder if that was just something developed by Gnome, but they put the Novell thing on it. Or maybe Novell had something to do with the development of the program. I'm not too sure. But anywho. So other than those two particular applications and the modified theme, and of course the new startup sound, which we heard earlier, really that's about it. There's not too much different as per, well, this OS at all. I mean, OpenOffice is still version 2.0 and now the progress bar is back, so yay. The interface might be a little slightly different, but otherwise it's really just about the same as ever. I believe the desktop wallpapers are the same as, yeah, as Ubuntu 6.06. .06. This one's a little bit different, but this one's quite dark and too familiar to the old releases, so I didn't bother with it. I decided I'd use the simple Ubuntu because it changes things up a little bit. But anywho, that's about it for now. So appreciate y'all taking the time to watch and I will see you all in the next video.
that's an interesting change. It actually finishes the startup sound, or startup sound, finishes the shutdown sound before it actually exits the GNOME desktop environment. And it is, uh, is it shutting down? I'm not sure. My mouse is frozen. So I'm not sure what it's doing. Uh, let me check. Oh, no, it just shut down. Okay. Interesting. I would have figured it would have brought the Ubuntu logo on shutdown, but it did not. So I guess that's a difference. So, all right. Well, now it's the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.